Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino tonight. The latest on the state's COVID-19 power struggle, plus a look at the whopping fundraising totals in our U.S. Senate race, and the NCAA president weighs in on the fate of fall sports. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome into Hey Kentucky with LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer. And Keith, the weekend is almost here. Will we still be wearing masks? I know I will. I mean, I'm planning on it <laughs> if I go out of the house, but, you know, are we going to be told to do so? Who knows? Don't know. We still don't know yet. Let's get to it. The legal volleying over Governor Bashir's powers to enact COVID-19 restrictions continues. Last night, a northern Kentucky judge said those executive orders were unconstitutional. That's jeopardizing the mask mandate, which went into effect a week ago. It would also allow daycare centers, restaurants, and other venues to ignore the governor's limited capacity rulings, along with hygiene practices for cleaning and sanitizing. While Attorney General Daniel Cameron argued it's a matter of being unconstitutional, Bashir said it's about public health and safety. We are so much better off than virtually every state around us. We have crushed the curve. Yes, we need to take some additional steps as we see it escalating across the country. Uh, and, and a major problem is other states. A whole lot of our new cases come from people going to the beach and coming back. But this would basically say we would not have the powers to do what we did to flatten the curve in the beginning. The governor went on to say that he will now take this matter to the state Supreme Court, where he hopes common sense will prevail. As for the immediate impact, we're still waiting to hear as of this taping whether the mask mandate is still in effect, Keith. And regardless of uh, the decision there, uh, Governor Bashir is going to appeal that. I mean, this one's just really boggling my mind. I mean, it's going to turn into the Wild West if we just allow everybody to fill up their restaurants and, and every other, uh, you know, place of business and I mean I feel like we've done pretty good as a state and it's been under the leadership and things that that Governor Bashir has done and now it feels like we're we got a chance at, at risking everything we've done. I, I agree and and the the hygiene and cleaning things uh, mandates are they truly that unconstitutional like let's just you know let's keep it clean I just don't know. A lot of yeah. legal wrangling. All right, as school districts try to decide whether to send students back to in-person classes, some pediatricians who happen to be parents as well are saying something you might not expect, that it may be a big mistake not to send kids back to the classroom. They say that as long as safety requirements are in place, like social distancing, keeping desks apart, and good hand washing, they would send their own children back to school without hesitation. One Louisville pediatrician and mother of three says kids need structure and that NTI can cause their mental health to suffer, bringing anxiety and depression and making some kids feel isolated. Other concerns include children not getting enough food or exercise at home, those with special needs or those who live in troubled households and who look to schools to find stability with teachers or coaches. These are well-trained, um, highly educated folks who solve a lot of challenges every single day. We aren't fully appreciating that there are significant safety risks to keeping kids solely at home. Louisville superintendent is recommending that schools start the 2020-21 year at home for at least six weeks of NTI learning. And Keith, I think the big takeaway from this is there's not one good answer. There just isn't. No, there isn't. But the more I keep thinking about it, the more I think I, I really want to send my son to school. And, and I like the way that maybe Fayette County could do it and the fact that you'll go one day and maybe take the next day off and do that as a, an NTI. I, I'm okay with that. But I, I feel like they need to be in there. And especially like the pediatricians say, if you do those three things that, that they mentioned, I, I think it would be okay to send kids into school. I would send mine back. Yes, absolutely. All right, one month after marching with their list of requests to help with racial equality, a group of Lexington faith leaders is revisiting those issues. They say enough time has passed for city leaders to enact some meaningful change. Black and white faith leaders from Lexington and across central Kentucky say they're not seeing enough progress as it relates to their list of requests. No-knock warrants have not been completely eliminated in Lexington as they have been in Louisville. 
And in the business sector, these leaders feel as if African-American-run companies are not seeing the same share of the pie as their white counterparts and that the numbers are being fudged. The city of Lexington reportedly did 20% of its contracts with minority businesses. However, the majority of their business were, went to white companies owned by veterans and women and less than 1% of it was done with black firms. This is both shameful and unconscionable. The faith leader spoke to the media yesterday in the hopes of avoiding the kick the can down the road syndrome to this point where they've where it gets forgotten about in a couple of weeks or months. And, and Keith, I think we saw that when the protests first started, that coronavirus definitely took a back seat in the uh, national media spotlight. And now it's back to being front and center. Yeah, and, and the thing I like about this is that the, the items they're bringing up, they're important. Yeah. But it's almost not even about those. It's the fact that they're not letting this die like we've seen it happen in past, you know, experiences where where there's been an uproar and some protests and then it just stops and yep. they're keeping it going and that's the good thing there that is a good thing that's what needs to happen turning to kentucky senate race there are a couple of updates on amy mcgrath's upcoming challenge to longtime incumbent mitch mcconnell the democratic challenger continued her blistering fundraising pace in the spring out distancing the republican senate majority leader for another quarter by a total of $17.4 million to McConnell's $12.2 million. McGrath's fundraising total since entering the race is $47 million, while McConnell has brought in nearly $38 million for the campaign cycle, although he has a little more cash on hand uh, after McGrath's spending in the Democratic primary. Meanwhile, an internal Democratic poll has McGrath within striking distance trailing McConnell 45 to 41%. And Keith, I know it's apples and oranges, but we're talking about $85 million. By the time the election happens, it's going to be well over $100 million between these two candidates. Can you think of a better way to spend that money? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe several different yeah. ways to spend that money. Um, but, yeah, the main thing that, that's amazing to me is just how quiet she has been yeah. and how she continues to just, you know, make progress and continue to, to raise the money, and you hardly ever hear from her. And you know what? I think Mitch McConnell's actually been, um, he, he's been really good the last few weeks for this coronavirus thing and being kind of a leader in what we should be doing. Um, yeah. Amy should probably speak up a little bit more. All right. Yeah, I think if she's going to definitely have to challenge, you know, at yeah. some point, And so she's going to have to be ready to speak up soon. Yeah. All right. The back and forth about the fate of college sports continues. The NCAA has issued its next set of return to sport guidelines and President Mark Emmert gives a pretty pessimistic outlook. In the process of informing schools what they needed to do to protect student athletes and prevent the spread of COVID-19, Emmert said the current data is pointing in the wrong direction for those hoping to see fall sports. Meanwhile, the delay of sports on other levels continues. Center College and its Southern Athletic Association have announced the suspension of athletic competition through January 1st. However, Keith, I did see today that NFL doctors have told the NFLPA that they think it is safe now to open up training camp. So maybe we'll at least see professional football. <laughs> Until they open up training camp and right. then uh, we see everybody testing. But, yeah, I, I'm still... I'm still on that downward spiral when I'm looking at fall yeah. sports um, happening. I just, uh, I, it's not feeling good to me with all of these, you know, conferences and everything that are putting off the fall sports or, or you know, it's it's getting depressing. It, sure. it, it is. It's not, the, the glass is not half full. All right. Uh, now and, on, and I want to keep everybody yeah. safe, okay? Yes, so I want to say that. I want yes. everybody to be safe. But it's just something that we want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now in Hay, Kentucky, in case you missed it, a review of recent headlines. A prosecutor in Louisville is dropping the felony charges filed against more than 80 people arrested during a protest that moved into Attorney General Daniel Cameron's front yard. LMPD had defended the decision, citing protesters' intent to escalate their actions and a live stream where they're heard saying, burn it down. And Jerry Lundergan, the father of former Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, has been sentenced to nearly two years in federal prison for an election finance violation in his daughter's campaign for U.S. Senate. But the sentence won't start until next year due to COVID-19 concerns. 
And the Scott County judge is firing back at criticism of his photo with Ryan Quarles, which has come up during the Ag Commissioner's legal battle with Governor Bashir. Judge Brian Privet says the social media picture does not represent a close personal relationship between the two. Before we go to break, we want to let you know that you can now see clips of Hey Kentucky on the LEX18 app on devices for your TV like Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire. Just download the LEX18 app, and when you open it, hit the back button to call up the main menu. You can see clips from the current day or past airings. Up next on Hey Kentucky, the pandemic may be changing the way they do things, but the Shepherd's House Run for Recovery is carrying on. We'll talk to organizers of the annual event about their continuing efforts to fight drug addiction in the bluegrass. Stay with us.